the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic. This is for you. The 13th session of the Senate, the second regular session of the 19th Congress, is hereby called to order. Today, we will be led in prayer by a distinguished colleague from Cavite, no other than Senator uh, Francis Tol Tolentino. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day in all humility and meekness, seeking your guidance and wisdom as we gather in this chamber to conduct the business of the Philippine Senate. We implore your Holy Spirit to descend upon this hall and all those within so that we may all be blessed with clarity of mind and strength of will. For our shortcomings and frailties, we implore your compassion and forgiveness, Lord, and recognize that without your power, we remain your humble creations. As our nation continues to face challenges and tribulations, may your divine hand guide us as we collectively decide and collaboratively work for the good of our fellow Filipinos. Bless us with discernment and prudence and fortify our spirits so that we may choose that which is right and pleasing to your holy will. We also thank you, Lord, for guiding and safely allowing our resupply ships, Unime 1, and Unizame Uni too, to enter the Ayungan Shoal today at 9.07 a.m. safely to provide food and medicine for our brave soldiers despite the threats coming from several foreign ships. <laughs> prosperity, and peace, which abundantly flows from you. We also pray for the eternal repose of the soul of a fellow public servant, Secretary Tuts Ople. All this we earnestly ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Tolentino, together with your audiovisual presentation. Uh, we'd like to... Before we suspend session, I'd just also like to echo what uh, Senator Tolentino had said. Uh, today is a sad day for all our laborers and OFWs on the death of a dear friend, not just to me, but to the Filipino people, uh, Secretary Tuts Ople. She was a wonderful woman with a big heart for our OFWs. Uh, we pray for her family and we pray for the eternal peace and rest of her soul. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Session suspended.
I believe before we uh, we uh, call the roll of members while we're waiting for our minority floor leader, maybe we can start with the guests that are in the gallery. Mr. President, no. before we do that, okay. just uh, give a short manifestation in relation to what you manifested, Mr. President. Yes, please. It is on a sad note that uh, this representation heard about the uh, passing of our kababayan in Bulacan, uh, Secretary Toots Ople. Mr. President, she just lost two of his siblings, Mr. President, in less than a month. I have not heard of three siblings, uh, Mr. President, na, na mayapa in a month or so. Uh, nakakalungkot, Mr. President, and it's not just the loss of uh, uh, the entire province of Bulacan, but also of this nation. When we pass the Department of uh, Migrant Workers, Mr. President, you and I know very well that the first person on our minds then to head the department is no other than Secretary Toots Ople. And that's why when she was chosen by Senate, by, uh, by our President, President Bongbong Marcos, wala ho ni isa na nagtaas ng kilay o na nag-question sa kanyang bilang Secretary of the Department of Migrant Workers. Nakikiramay po tayo, hindi lamang sa kanyang immediate family, sa buong pamilya Ople, sa mga taga-Hagunoy, mga taga-Bulacan, at mga taga-DMW, kung hindi sa bawat isang Pilipino na kagaya ni uh, Secretary Toots Ople, nangangarap na dumating ang araw na ang mga Pilipino yung mga ibang bansa, not because of necessity, but because of uh, their option to go there, not, not because they are being forced to go there. Maraming salamat, you know, Pangulo. Maraming salamat, Mr. Jair. Mr. President, this juncture may be allowed to... Uh, 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 Acknowledge some guests from the gallery, guests of our Senate President Subiri, Doctor of Public Administration students of Carlos Hilado State University, and all scholars of the province of Negros Occidental, headed by Dr. Mary Ann Maestral and Ms. Aveline Maranyon. Guests of Senator Angara, Lady Mayors from the 3rd District of Bohol, Mayor Tamar Olaviar of Can Candihay, Mayor Inday Simasio of Anda, Mayor Onji Lim of Mabini, Mayor Juliet Dano of Sevilla. Guests of Senator Cayetano, Pia Cayetano, Ched Commissioner, Joe Mark Libre and Company. Guests of Senator Bongo, Mayor Renato Cabiel of Mochong Samar. And guests of this representation, our dear friend, Mayor Crisel Lagman Luistro of Tabaco City, Albay and her company. Welcome po. Welcome to all our distinguished guests. Welcome to your Senate. And of course, special mention to my dear friend, uh, former Congresswoman, now Mayor Kisel Agman. Mr. President, let me also acknowledge uh, guests of this representation. We are celebrating National Tech Book Day. We, had an we have a, an exhibit here outside the session hall. We have with us TESDA Secretary Teng Mangudadatu, DDG Rosana Urdaneta, DDG Aniseto Bertis III, DDG Vidal Villanueva III, and test the regional directors from all over the country. They are all here, and executive directors and district directors of NCR. We welcome them in this August chamber, Mr. President. Yes, uh, welcome, Secretary, and of course to all the men and women of TESDA, the hardworking men and women of TESDA. Thank you, Mr. President. So Mr. Pres we proceed with the calling of the role of members. Yes, Mr. President, I was about to move. Thank you. So let's proceed, Secretary, with the uh, roll call of members. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano Alan, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachelian, Senator Go, Senator Ontiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Ligarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Revilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. With who's my, who's missing? With 22 senators present, the chair declares presence of a quorum. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, this juncture, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 12th session, Wednesday, August 16, 2023, and consider the same as approved. There be no objection. Motion is approved.
Mr. President, at this juncture, may I just uh, greet a dear colleague of ours who celebrated uh, his birthday yesterday, no other than Senator Lito Lapid, Mr. President. Oh, our Pinuno celebrated secretly. Uh, it seemed that nobody knew it was his birthday today, uh, yesterday. Uh, happy birthday, Senator Lito Lapid. We ask for a minute suspension so we can uh, greet our distinguished colleague.
Mr. President, before we continue, may I just also place on record our sincerest and warmest congratulations to Senator Lito Lapid for being conferred the Fernando Po Jr. Memorial Award during the recent Filipino Academy of Movie Arts and Sciences, FAMAS, Mr. President. So congratulations to Senator Lito Lapid. Well deserving. Mr. President, also I would like to acknowledge, as I acknowledged a while ago, the Test the Family headed by Secretary Teng Mangudadatu, the exhibitors are with us, Mr. President. There's a lot of uh, exhibits going on outside this August chamber. We have the Connected Women uh, headed by Ms. Ruth Yu Owen and Ms. Agnes Gerbasio. High Tech Power Incorporated by Engineer Eric Jude Soliman. Shoketsu SMC Corporation, Ms. Carmi Valderrama and Mr. Joseph Nova. Center for Barista and Tourism Academy Training and Assessment Incorporated by Ms. DJ Wanta. SMI Institute Incorporated, Ms. Christina Aplaska. The Philippine Center for Creative Imaging, headed by Ms. Mary Josa Miranda. The Tesla, Tesla Regional Training Center in NCR, headed by Chief Gilbert Castro. And the uh, Dole Bureau of Local Employment, Mr. Noel Campita. We welcome all of them in this August Chamber. Yes, you're all welcome to your Senate. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Secretary Teng, it's good to have you with us here. You're a dear friend to many of us. And uh, DDG Bertis, DDG Rosana or Daneta are also here, Mr. President. Yes, our de de Deputy Director Generals, welcome as well. Thank you. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. There will be no objection. We ask Secretary to read and continue to proceed with the reference of business. Bills on first reading, Senate number 2407, prohibiting money mules and other fraudulent acts committed involving financial accounts, providing penalties and for other purposes, Senator Gachalian. To the Committees on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Justice and Human Rights. 2408. Institutionalizing the Philippine National Games and Appropriate Funds, therefore, Senator Zubiri. To the Committee on Sports and Finance. 2409, institutionalizing the Pambansang Pabahay para sa Pilipino 4PH program, Senator Ejercito. To the Committees on Urban Planning and Housing, Local Government and Finance. 2410, creating the Philippine Transportation Security Authority, defining its powers and functions, appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Ejercito. To the Committees on Public Service, Civil Service, and uh, finance. 2411, defining the maritime zones under the jurisdiction of the Republic of the Philippines, Senator De La Rosa. To the Committee on Philippine Maritime and Admiralty Zones. 2412, creating the Department of Water Resources Management, defining its powers and functions, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. To the Committees on Public Service, Services, Civil Service, and Finance. 2413, amending certain provisions of RA10845 and for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. To the Committees on Agriculture, Food and Grand Reform, Justice and Human Rights. Resolutions. Proposed Senate Resolution 740 directing the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry on the election results, which allegedly came from only one private internet protocol address, Senator Pimentel III. To the on Accountability of Public Officers and Electoral Reforms and People's Participation. 741. Congratulating and commending the awardees of the 2023 Metrobank Foundation Outstanding Filipino, Senator Angara. To the Committee on Rules. 742, calling for an inquiry in aid of legislation into the murder of 17-year-old Jemboy Baltasar, the unabated use of excessive and lethal force by the PNP, the laws, rules, and regulations on police engagement and use of firearms, and the laws, rules, and regulations go governing accountability and criminal liability of police officers, Senator Ontiveros. The Committee of Public Order, Dangerous Drugs, Justice, and Human Rights. Committee Reports, Committee Report 103 by the Committee on Local Government on House Number 5826 by Representatives Flores and Tambunting, declaring September 1 of every year a special non-working holiday in the province of Bukidnon to be known as Iron on Bukidnon in commemoration of its foundation anniversary, recommending its approval without amendment, taking into consideration Senate Number 2366, Senator Ehrhardt. To the calendar for ordinary business. 104, by the Committees on Local Government and Electoral Reforms and People's Participation on House Number 5822 by Representative Singson Mihan, entitled An Act Separating the Seizures of Quimbaya, Longboy, Bolala, Kenapian, Indadangan, Kumanibe, and Makaag from Suyo proper in the municipality of Suyo, Ilocosur, and constituting them into a distinct and independent barangay to be known as Barangay Kinapian, recommending its approval without amendment, taking into consideration Senate Number 1739, Senator Ejercito. To the calendar for ordinary business. 105, by the Committees on Local Government and Electoral Reforms and People's Participation in House Number 5820, by Sing Son Mihan and Tambunting, separating the seizures of Kaingan, Butak, Coscosnong, Longboy, Bangkag, and Botige from Barangay Manatong 
in Suyo, Ilocosur, and constituting them into a distinct and independent barangay to be known as Barangay Buta. Recommending its approval without amendment, taking into consideration Senate number 1737, Senator Ejercito. To the calendar for ordinary business, the, let's proceed to the additional reference to business. Additional reference of business, message from the House. Letter from the House informing the Senate that on 9 August 2023, it passed the following House bills in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate in which establish test dot training and assessment centers in the following areas. House number 8211 in Tanawan, Batangas. 8212, Cabuyao, Laguna. 8213, Dapas, Yargao Islands, Surigao del Norte. 8272, City of Peranaque. 8273, Cabagan, Isabela. 8274, Paracelis, Mountain Province. 8275, Bana, Ilocos Norte. 8276, Mayuyao, Ifugao. 8277, Maasin, Southern Leyte. 8448, Rodriguez, Rizal. 8449, Calibo, Aklan. 8450, Alabat, Quezon. 8451, Ginayangan, Quezon. 8496, Tigaon, Camarines Sur. 8499, Kibawe, Bukidnon. And 8519, Tubot, Lanao del Norte. To the Committees on Higher Technical Vocational Education and Finance. Mr. President. Yes, sir. May I be allowed to just uh, make a short manifestation, Mr. President? Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Sorry. Mr. President. Magandang hapon po, Ginoong Pangulo, sa ating mga kasamahan na naririto. Nais ko lang pong simulan ang ating linggo at batiin ang lahat ng isang masaya at makabuluhang National Tech Book Day. Idinideklara po ng Republic Act No. 10970 ang August 25 ng bawat taon bilang National Tech Book Day na ang pangunahing layunin ay tanggalin ang stigma sa tech book. Tayo po dito sa Senado, mayroon po tayong exhibit of stories of tech book graduates and industry innovations and skills demonstration. Muli nagpapasalamat ako, Ginoong Pangulo, dahil sa tulong niyo po, Senate President Subiri at ilang mga kasama natin dito sa Senado, naging batas po itong National Tech Book Day. Ang exhibit po ay hindi lamang for the sake of celebration. Ito po ay para patuloy na iangat ang dignidad ng ating mga tech book workers. Nagpapasalamat din po tayo sa pamunuan ng TESDA sa panguna ni Secretary Suharto T. Mangudadato na nagbigay ng kanyang pambungad na pananalita at pagbubukas ng exhibit. Kasama rin po natin kanina si Senator Win Gatchelian at Senator Nancy Binay sa pagbubukas ng exhibit na ito. Kasama din po natin ang ilang mga guests na nabanggit natin mula sa Connected Women, High Tech Power, Soketsu SMC Corp, Center for Barista, SMI Institute, PCCI, TESDA Regional Training Center, at DOLE Bureau of Local Employment. Ginoong Pangulo, napakaganda po ng opening na exhibit sapagkat ipinapakita nito na hindi lamang merong chansang magtagumpay ang nasa tech book sector. Meron po silang karera at ito nga ho ang pinag-uusapan ngayon, mainit na usapin sa Education Commission na pinag-uusapan namin nila Senator Angara, Senator Gatchelian at Senator Cayetano na kung saan tulungan natin yung pathway, Mr. President, na hindi lamang uh, uh, stages kung hindi magkaroon ng seamless education doon po sa tech book track. Nais nice po nating bigyang pansin at uh, Ipa, ipamahagi sa bulwagang ito ang iba't ibang storya na ating uh, nakita at na-encounter ngayong araw na ito. Yung storya po ni Bon Joseph Mack na siyang kasama rin po natin kanina. Si Bon po ay isang OFW na dating barista sa Saudi Arabia. Natapos po ang kanyang kontrata noong 2019. Ngunit naabutan siya ng pandemya ginoong Pangulo. So na-stuck po siya. Taong 2022, nag-aral po siya ng bartending NC2. At siya ay pinalad na makapagtrabaho sa Holland America Line bilang beverage utility worker. Sa loob po ng limang buwan ay na-promote siya bilang beverage server. Ngayon po, nadarating na September 2023, Siya po ay magsisimula ng bagong yugto ng kanyang buhay at magtatrabaho po siya sa Royal Caribbean Cruise sa mas mataas na posisyon. Kanina din po nakita at nakasama natin ang demo ni Anna Claire Hernandez sa graphic design. Si Anna po ay nagwagi ng Best of Nation Award at Silver Medalist for Graphic Design Technology sa 13th World Skills ASEAN Competition sa Singapore. 
World Skills Competition po ito, ginoong Pangulo, naganap nito lamang July 22 to 27, 2023. Siya po ay may NC3 or Visual Graphic Design mula sa TESDA. At meron din po siyang Advanced AutoCAD at AutoCAD Certifications for 2D, 3D, Color Rendering and Plotting noong 2021. Bilang panghuli, ginoong Pangulo, gusto ko pong ipakilala si Pepper. Kasama din po natin siya. Siya po ay isang humanoid AI-powered robot mula sa high-tech power. Kamakailan lamang ay naging robot presenter si Pepper sa 2023 Business Network International Philippine National Conference nito lamang pong July 7 to July 8, 2023. As you know, Mr. President, the creation of TESDA was a recommendation of Educational Commission or EDCOM 1, EDCOM of 1991, chaired by former Senator, our idol, the best Angara, Mr. President, the great Edgardo Angara, the father of our colleague, Senator Sani Angara, who, like his father, is also a staunch supporter, staunch advocate of the education sector. Mr. President, we have made significant headways in Tibet for technical vocational education and training through the passage of landmark legislations like RA 11230 or the Tulong Trabaho Act, the RA number 10968 or the Philippine Qualifications Framework Act, among others, for which we thank our dear colleagues, former and current, for the support, especially our Senate President, Mick Zubiri. Today, we honor all our predecessors who positioned Tibet through the creation of TESDA as one of the principal drivers for national development, progress, and improved quality of life. I feel proud, Mr. President. I feel proud for having had a chance to be TESDA Secretary from 2010 to 2015. Muli po, maraming salamat. Salamat po at uh, kita po ulit tayo sa exhibit hanggang sa dulo po ng linggong ito. Pagpalain tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Thank you, Mr. President. Maraming salamat, Majority Leader. Congratulations also for Tech Walk Day. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 2200 under Committee Report Number 66. This pertains to the Basic Education, Mental Health, and Well-Being Promotion Act. So move, Mr. President. There have been no objections to the motion. Motion approved. Mr. President, the parliamentary status of the measure is that we close the period of interpolations and debate. On that note, I move to open the period of amendments. There being no objections, period of amendments is open. Mr. President, there being no committee amendments, I move that we open the period of individual amendments. There being no, uh, we close the period of committee amendments and open the period of individual amendments. Mr. President, this juncture, I move that we recognize the sponsor of the measure, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, for individual amendments. Our distinguished sponsor, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, is recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, before I uh, go into the uh, amendments, allow me to uh, just clarify an issue that our minority uh, leader raised during the period of interpolation. And let me just put on record a statement. Uh, Mr. President, esteemed colleagues, I stand to manifest that I have revisited the transcripts of the public hearing and technical working groups conducted by the Committee on Basic Education. And I clarify for the record that the scholarship incentive provided under Section 9 of the Substitute Bill shall be for the benefit of in-service teachers, mental health associates, and non-teaching personnel. I am making this clarification, Mr. President, to qualify the issue raised by the good minority leader as regards as regards to the potential and potential unconstitutionality of the bill and i respectfully correct my previous response during the period of interpolation as eloquently pointed out by the good minority leader the bill does not grant scholarships to basic education graduates to take up mental health related courses in college. The actual intent of granting scholarships for a master's degree with a return service obligation is to attract and upskill mental health associates to become mental health specialists. This will help operationalize the career progression provided under Section 8 of the bill and address the supply shortage of mental health specialists as head of the care center uh, and um, uh, thank you mr president so mr president i will now go into my individual amendments with the permission of the body mr president 
on line four, oh, sorry, on page four, line 17, insert a comma after the word specialist and the phrase or by a mental health associate until such specialist such, such specialist is hired. Kama, as so move, Mr. President. There being no objection to the uh, amendment, amendment is introduced. On, on the same page, lines 20 to 22, delete the clause in, assess, in assisting the mental health specialist in the implementation of the program and delivery of the services of the center. Kama. Then capitalize letter T in the word the, as so move, Mr. President. There have been no objection to the amendment. The amendment's approved. On page six, line 19, after the word adjustment, insert a semicolon and the words career progression. As so move, Mr. President. There have been no objection. Amendment's approved. And lastly, Mr. President, on page seven, line 12, insert the following as the last sentence of the last paragraph of Section 8. The DEP-Ed and the CSC shall further develop a, a professional career progression for the growth and development of mental health specialists and mental health associates. So move, Mr. President. So this is after relevant existing rules and regulations, period, that yes. sentence. Yes, Mr. Correct? President. Correct, Mr. President. There being no amendment, amendment is approved. That's I mean, it. There being no objection, rather, the amendments approved. That's it, Mr. President. Mr. President, the uh, minority leader seeking the floor move, should be, he be recognized. Our distinguished minority floor leaders recognize that, or can you know, Coco Pimentel? Thank sir. you, Mr. President. On page uh, 7, line 25, after the word DepEd, we, we add the phrase, comma, which shall not be more than two years. Period. I am. I am referring. I'm putting a. I'm uh, putting a maximum uh, period uh, Mr. for, the, President, return for the return service. Yes. If, if acceptable to the author. Yes. So it would. It would read, uh, Your Honor, such a re such reasonable period as it, as may be determined by the DepEd comma, which, but, which, which shall, shall not, not be more than two more years. years. Period. period. So that would be the. That would be the maximum period for the return service, which can be required by the uh, DepEd for their uh, sc uh, personnel scholars, Mr. President. The permission of the two gentlemen, uh, Senator Pia Ketano, would like to Thank you. Please. With the indulgence of the two gentlemen, um, I, I truly appreciate this discussion. I think it is uh, a good idea to have clarity on what the return to service is. My only reservation in putting a specific number, um, I'd like to get uh, the sponsor's thoughts because in our EDCOM discussion, in our EDCOM quarterly meeting last week, we were already talking about how in many courses available now in the universities where uh, they have free tuition, and we talked about um, our Dr. Para Sabayan, uh, the, the the need to prioritize the courses that have the, the need to prioritize the courses uh, to to somehow encourage students to to take on these courses could really be differentiated by the kind of support that you give them in taking the courses. Correct. So although it wasn't a lengthy discussion, we were already talking about how do we prioritize these courses. Uh, how do we give more support so that they become teachers, they become health professionals? So my concern is if we make this initial decision now, um, would, I, again, I, I'm just asking for the thoughts of the sponsor probably, and even the minority floor leader, uh, would would we possibly in a, in a later, a subsequent bill, maybe change that and 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 make a list of uh, courses where we provide the different return to service because all of us right now in uh here are have been in in the senate for at least more than three years no some of us have been here for more than a decade including me and we regret later on these numbers that we put in um we we do our we do a lot of 
uh, legislation piecemeal. So I don't have anything against it, major Minority Floor Leader, to be clear. Huh? I don't. But I just want to see the bigger picture. What about um, the nurses and their return to service? What would that be? What about the regular teachers or teachers who specialize in math, which is where we're doing very poorly? What would that be? You know, I just really want to align this with the bigger picture on on the lack of qualified personnel, both in the education and health sector, and this covers both. So that is my question to the two gentlemen. Well, uh, Mr. President, the section is about the depth ed personnel scholars, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if to be confirmed by our. Yes, Mr. yes this is about yes, the depth ed personnel scholars. In service, though. and in, in in exchange for their upskilling through a scholarship in a mental health related uh, course, there will be an obligation for return service. But then the section only says that the length of that ret uh, return service is within a reasonable period. So, my amendment puts a maximum possible period, but that is not the period. So that's the that's just yeah. the intent of the uh, amendment, Mr. President, just to just to put a maximum on what the DepEd can require as the return service period for the return service. And that and, would be the effect uh, yeah. of the amendment. And and um, my 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 um, comment on that would be precisely, I don't know. That might be the norm. It may not be the norm. Uh, the only one I can think of is PMA. I, as far as I know, I, unless it's changed, it's eight years. That's the only basis we have because we've been very, I don't know, conservative. Parang ayaw natin maglagay ng ganon. But I feel it's high time that we talk about this. And I'm just concerned that we're taking this in isolation when honestly, a lot of these professions have the same issue. We need to encourage more of them to take it. And regarding the Dep Ed scholars, there's a lot. It's open-ended, Mr. Mr. Sponsor. If you look at what's written there, they're Dep Ed scholars for so many courses. It could be it could be the guidance. It could be it's in-house service. It's it's still everything. So that's my concern. I'm not again. I'm not against this. I'm just asking the body and and the two gentlemen to consider. Balikan natin lahat ng lang batas ngayon. Lahat yun lalagyan natin. Kasi ang ayoko mangyari, ang ayoko mangyari, yung iba wala, ito meron, but I'm actually for it. I'm actually for it. And I actually support the clarity that the minority floor leaders bringing into this discussion. I'm just saying that it only covers this this uh this line of work. Well, president, can I ask, can I ask for a minute suspension? So sure, suspend it for one minute.
certain group that we recognize, Senator Pia Cayetano. Our distinguished colleague from Taguig and Patero, Senator Cayetano is recognized. Mr. President, this is what I love about the Senate. We uh, take seriously our being a collegial body. We use our experiences, our intelligence, the resources we have available to us, especially our invaluable staff, to, to you know, share our ideas and hopefully come up with something acceptable. So I've already put on record that um, there are many professions that we want to fully support. But, but um, to add to the discussion today, uh, I'll repeat what I've said in other forums. Um, we are experiencing modern day colonialism. Um, countries that need our very valuable human resource come in and they're even still in the schools, they're already recruiting them. And who paid for their education? The Filipino people. The very same Filipino people, many of whom cannot even make a minimum wage, are paying for this, the education of our students who, if they will serve in this country, then well and good. Everybody's happy. They got a good education. They serve the Filipino people for, for a certain amount of time. So with the, um, if, if uh, the two, our two colleagues on the floor um, would accept, our humble proposal is um, leave the language as is and uh, we hope that this discussion will be used, well, no, not we hope, we expect that this discussion will be used by the implementing agencies uh, as our majority floor le leader mentioned during the discussion of the record, so I'll put it on the record, in our Dr. Para Sabayan, it is one is to one. Um, you, you're, you're given a scholarship for one year, you serve for one year. Scholarship is four years, you serve for four years. And as our deputy minority floor leader also put on record, basically for um, uh, scholars in the Philippine Military Academy, it's one is to two. For every year that you study, you serve for two years. So after your four-year course, it's eight years of service. So that's what I'm looking at, Your Honor, and I feel this is the best way to develop and encourage patriotism and love of country. Pinag-aral ka, panilbihan ka din sa bansa mo. So yun ang sa akin, Your Honor, Mr. President. Mr. President. Yes, uh, the sponsor. Th thank you, Mr. President, to the uh, good gentle lady from Taguig. Indeed, I thank um, Senator Pia and the minority leader for supporting uh, the return service concept. Uh, indeed, um, these are funds being paid for by the Filipino people in order to upskill and reskill certain professions in our country, especially those who are working in government. And it's just reasonable for them to stay in government and serve uh, the public. And uh, looking at the different agencies in our um, country, uh, I do acknowledge Senator Pia's uh, uh, comment earlier that it varies no, from agencies to agencies. For example, um, in the Supreme Court, it's one is to two. So meaning if the Supreme Court pays for your upskilling, reskilling, you have to stay there for uh, two years for every one year of um, upskilling and reskilling. Uh, for the DOF, it's the same. If the DOF pays for your master's degree, for example, you take MBA for two years, you have to stay there for four years. So it, it varies, no? and, and it's good to um, give that flexibility to um, the Department of Education. And we can actually um, discuss this during oversight, the oversight uh, uh, process of this bill, if ever it gets approved, Mr. President. So given, given those manifestations, Mr. President, this, this representation is willing to withdraw his proposed amendment, but uh, at least it has been expressed that the reasonable period as uh, currently in the bill has been construed to be more or less two years by this representation, at least, uh, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. So President, because the typically, if you take your master's degree, that's two years. No? So one is to one. And uh, the law, for example, the Dr. Para Sabayan, which is almost, a, a, almost similar to uh, this proposal, is one is to one. So meaning for every one scholarship, for every one year of scholarship, you have to stay in government for one year. Thank you. So, so I, I withdraw. I withdraw my proposed amendment. Mr. So, Mr. President, uh, going to my next uh, amendment, it will be on page ten, on the last section, let's, section eighteen, on e the effectivity clause. I propose that we delete the phrase "notwithstanding the non-issuance of the IRR, comma," and then capitalize the letter T to uh, of the word. Uh, uh, this act, uh, this, Mr. President. So, because so the, the, um, the so you will remove. Yes, the rationale is that uh, 
the effectivity of the act uh, is not dependent on uh, the, the IRR. So mm -hmm. it is uh, not anymore necessary to state that, Mr. President. So you are removing uh, the 30 day period? Uh, so now, now, now the oh, section yes. eight, section eighteen effectivity will will now read: This act shall take effect fifteen days after its publication in the official gazette or in the newspaper of general circulation. What does the sponsor say, but Mr. President? Uh, before I answer that, Mr. President, uh, the history of this um, uh, of this uh, sentence came from the time when. I remember Senator Tolentino made a uh, privileged speech on some laws uh, that are not being implemented because there are no IRRs being issued. And uh, I remember that was a lengthy discussion here in the floor. And uh, one of the recommendations is to explicitly say that the law should be should take full effect despite the absence of an IRR, Mr. President. So that's the logic why we added um, this uh, sentence mr president but um i heard from the good minority leader even without this sentence uh the law will take effect and it can be implemented so in other words we don't have to wait for the ir to be promulgated before the law takes effect that's the the we, offshoot mr president uh mr president yes we should be careful uh with this with inserting this phrase because actually the obligation to come up with an irr is because the law is already effective. Mm. Union is. So, so uh, my suggestion is we, we remove this uh, phrase. With, 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 with those uh, discussions, Mr. President, I accept, Mr. President. So, amendments accepted. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Mr. yes, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Please, because of the long discussions, we ask the Secretariat, subject to style, to make sure that the proper wording is implemented. Mr. President, we move that we recognize Senator Pia Cayetano for her individual amendments. Our distinguished so, colleague, Mr. Senator Pia Cayetano, is recognized. Uh, ready to resume. Ready, ready. Mr. Please, please, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with the indulgence of the sponsor, um, I and, and with the indulgence, I would like to ask clarificatory questions because some of my possible amendments may not be necessary uh, with the clarifications. For the record, um, in the interest of time, my staff has also met with yeah. your staff, I understand, and with DOH. Yeah. Um, so we're pretty much aligned, Mr. President, nothing heavy. Um, but I feel some of my questions, uh, though they may not need um, actual amendments, they would be useful for the guidance of the implementing agencies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. President. So, um, Mr. President, I'll go. I'll go page by page, not necessarily line by line. Um, my, I'm okay with page one. On page two, uh, there's there's a mention of care center. It's not a defined term, but it is elaborated in the next section, and it's a short bill, so I think yeah. it's okay. No need to include that definition there. Um, unless, and I leave the, I leave it up to the chairman subject to style. Would you like to say a Kent's care center as defined in section five, but it's up to his, the chairman. It's not, it's not a major it. So to be clear, um, page. Care center. Easy. Um, to insert, uh, 
Preferred Care Center at the phrase as defined in Section 5. five. Yes. Yes, so Mr. Moved. President. I accept, Mr. President. Uh, there have been no objection and accepted by the sponsor. The amendment is approved. Thank you. And then, Your Honor, on the definition of terms, um, we have letter B under Section 3, letter B and letter C uh, <laughs> refer to mental health associate and mental health specialist, respectively. We note that the mental health associate are ba basically bachelor degree holders, while letter C, which refers to mental health specialist, specialists, are are refer are referred to mental health specialist plantilla positions in the dep ed who who shall have qualified pursuant to either the provisions of RA 9258 or uh, RA 10029 and these basically are um, professionals who have a master's de degree is that correct yes master's degree and license Mr President so also yung sa bachelors they are not necessarily licensed yes Mr President okay. I'm fine as long as it's that's clear to again the implementing agencies and of course the schools. No, okay. I move on. We're on page three, section four. So section four, I would say, is the meat of the bill, yes. and this is where it states that the school-based mental health program is hereby institutionalized, and this is it. To do what? To promote and ensure the mental health and well-being of all learners in public and private schools, including out-of-school children. Okay. And then the second sentence goes on to say, the program shall promote mental health awareness, number one. Then to manage the mental health concerns of all learners, including the prevention of suicide in school. So, that, so am I correct in understanding that there are two components, promoting mental health awareness and two, addressing the mental health concerns? Yes, Mr. President, okay. correct. Um, I would think, and I'd like to know if his honor agrees, the promoting mental health awareness in a way is probably the easy part because these are this is basically an information campaign. Yes. So as long as we we develop that that program, then it's just um, it's just uh, presented and um, rolled out all over the country. Correct, is Mr. That correct? President. Okay, and I'd like to put on record. I'm not sure if there's. actually insert a provision but what constitutes mental health awareness and what would the, those interventions be because to my mind these are programs that um number one gives gives everybody in the environment an understanding of what mental health is and then number two the programs or interventions not yet on a case-to-case -case basis but basically to ensure that i think the second part that i mentioned is still part of the mental health awareness and not yet part of the uh, managing the mental health concerns would, would that be correct do i understand in other words do i understand correctly that the phrase managing mental health concerns would already be a case-to-case -case intervention or the program. So to be clear, I'll give an example. If I meant in sports, raises mental, raises the level of happiness, raises uh, a person's mental well-being. Does that fall on one in one or two? That will fall on uh, one, Mr. One. Mr. That's President. That's what I thought also. Well, so Mr. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, Mr. President, um, the. Uh, uh, Her Honor is correct that uh, there are two major components of the program, which is to promote mental health awareness and manage mental health concerns. And this ties up to Section 6, Letter B. Okay. Um, and Letter B talks about skills and information for prevention, identification, uh, skills that will be developed for learners. So, in other words, the learners themselves will be part of the uh, promotion of mental health, Mr. President. And then, uh, the, the manage is a form of intervention, and that, time, that ties up also with uh, Section 6, Letter C. You know, 
which is facilitate the efficient mm. referral for appropriate intervention and provision of adequate aftercare support and so on, Mr. President. So we, we tied up and um, uh, the functions are laid out in um, uh, the functions of the care center, Mr. President. So we, we tied it up uh, uh, together. Um, because actually, Mr. President, in letter B, and, and thank you, I appreciate that. In le letter B, I agree with His Honor that it says um, the care center, these are the functions of the care center, no? equip the learner with skills and information. So the learner is empowered, right? Yes, so Mr. President. this is where I love these existing programs already, where you have these um, peer support groups. Yes. Because uh, these are... Um, uh, empowered young people, and a lot of them are church-based, school-based, community-based, where they acknowledge that um, as young people, they need the support. Uh, they've gotten programs from, I, I hope, I, I, and I, most the ones I've heard of, they come from their well-developed programs, either provided by NGOs or the church yes. system, whatever. Uh, so then these young people are now equipped. No? Yeah. To, to pass it on, to use the information among their peer groups and even pass it on. But that same section B goes on to say, um, hold on, and refer for their, so wait, equip the learners with skills and information for prevention, identification, proper response, and referral for their own and others' mental health needs. What does that mean, Your Honor, when you say and referral? Because that gives me the impression that they'll refer it to a specialist when yes. my understanding of letter B was still mostly in response to the awareness where they're creating their own program. But Mr. President, the, your, the, your Honor is absolutely correct in um, the peer support. In fact, our experts were telling that the first step, to simplify things, the first step is for our learners to know how to detect mental health issues. And the learners have their own uh, sort of group. Support you know, system. Support, group, support yeah. system, support group that they can talk about it. Yes. Uh, because Typically, learners don't go immediately to their teachers, exactly. don't go immediately to, the their, parents. to their parents. They talk among themselves. So this is the type of um, skills or information that our mental health specialists uh, will be teaching our learners in yes. order for them to respond and be aware of this yes. type of uh, conditions. Um, the... the uh, what's important for our learners is to know where to refer it to. Okay. So in this particular case, for to our mental health specialist or mental health okay. associate, as a case may be. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, it's clearer now. So that's still part of the awareness because part of the awareness is to know where to yes, refer. Correct. Okay, yes, correct, thank Mr. you. President. That's very clear, Your Honor. I, I always admire the, His Honor, our Chairman, with how thorough he is um, having hours and hours of hearings. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Thank you. Well, Mr. President, I also well, learned from the experts because we invited um, experts that the, what is being envisioned <laughs> here is not a medical intervention. Is so not. It's not a medical intervention. That, that, that's going to be my part two question. But I think, can we, um, yeah. uh, our, our Deputy Minority Floor Leader, I think, has an intervention. Yes, our Deputy Minority Floor Leader. Is Salamat kayo, Mr. President, and uh, thanks to the indulgence of the uh, good gentlewoman from Tagigan Pateros and the good sponsor. Just uh, an addition to the line of questioning now uh, of Her Honor. Uh, paalala ulit dun sa mga deliberations. Uh, on and the uh, substance of the mental health law, may papel din pong binibigay sa mga peer counseling groups. So similar dun sa pag-uusapan ng Your Honors about uh, groups of students, groups of friends, mga barkada, pati po peer counseling groups who, like the mental health associates, could also serve as kumbaga force multipliers for the mental health specialists on campus. So yun lang po, um, salamat kaayo Mr. President Thank and you. to the colleagues on the floor. Yeah. Thank you. And, and clearly it's a standard, Your Honor, as um, the Deputy Minority Floor Leader has pointed out. No, We're not veering away from, from the standards that have been set by previous, our previous yeah. law. So um, I'll go back, Your Honor, as I, as I was, um, we, as we were dissecting this section B. Um, I'm fine with that, Your Honor. Um, I'll go back to the previous page because we made that reference in connection with uh, the earlier section I was going through. And then when we get there, I might make an amendment there, Your Honor. So...
Okay, so then I'll go on to the second paragraph of section four starting in line 19, and it says there, the program shall be developed in consultation with learners, their parents and parents substitute, and then implemented by DepEd. So I really appreciate this because now it's clear that the program is learner-centered. Yeah. It is not a program just handed by DOH or mga psychiatrists. It's the kids who will dictate what works for them. Once the level of awareness has been uh, created and they know that there is such, in the same way, Your Honor, now after COVID, di ba, alam na ng mga bata, magmask ka pag inuubo ka. Uh, you know, they're very conscious with not blow, blowing your nose or coughing in public without proper protective um, interventions. Now they also know that there, are, there is such a thing as mental health issues and they will create this program with their parents. Um, I just want to highlight that I, I fully support that. Thank you, Mr. President. If I may uh, say a few words. Uh, yes, Mr. President, this was exactly what our um, experts suggested, that it should be um, a learner-centered as well as parents should be consulted on what program should be implemented in our schools um, because they don't want a scenario we're in. It will be a top-down approach where mm. all the programs come from the central office. Yes. It, it will be just fed to our schools. But our schools will have different um, situations. Our learners themselves have different, um, uh, are in different situations. So uh, that's the reason why um, they suggested that the program should be uh, inclusive and participative and localized, uh, especially uh, the members will be, will be uh, from the from parents and, and school members, Mr. President. So that is the, the, the reason behind why we included this um, uh, sentence, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, again, I, I commend uh, his honor because I think that is the best approach. And of course, like his honor says, he relies on the experts for this. Mis Mr. President, on the same paragraph, but this time on line 25, it says the DepEd the Dep -Ed shall likewise implement compl complementary measures that enable other associated healthy behaviors among learners and eliminate the stigma on mental health counseling. What is that supposed to mean? The itong other associated healthy behaviors. Ano ba yung other associated? You mean the, th the idea of, of uh, let's say, having a mental health um, Club, yun ba yun? Yun ba yung associate healthy behaviors? Or like, yeah, I don't know. I, I just wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. Mr. President, I... Uh, I recall that the discussion here is, um, for, I, I think the, the, good, the good gentle lady from Tagig uh, made a very good example about sports. No? Yes, um, is this it? This, this is it's actually one. It's one of the examples, Mr. President, oh, okay. because um, in terms of mental health should not be approached in terms of reaction. You have so to be proactive. And uh, the discussion during the hearing and technical working group is DepEd should come up with uh, other activities that will um, promote um, healthy behavior so that students will not um, have issues uh, down the road on mental health, Mr. President. So activities such as sports, um, yes. such as um, uh, extracurricular activities, Mr. President, uh, positive reinforcement, this type of activities, Mr. President. So, um, Your Honor, I will submit language uh, to that effect because I believe uh, the sponsor and I are um, on the same page exactly on this, but I think it's the, the word behavior is not exactly accurate because it yeah. took His Honor, surprisingly, about 30 seconds <laughs> to explain. So that means his, I, I'm pretty sure His Honor, I'm trying to read His Honor's mind that, um, that 
uh, perhaps behavior is not exactly the right word. I think, and, and this is not yet my proposal, but I'm thinking the wording would be something like that DepEd shall likewise implement complementary measures that promote healthy behaviors. Um, and what, what would be these complementary measures? Yun nga po, yung mga programs on sports, yeah. on, uh, on um, um, you know, peer bonding, and so on and so forth. So yeah. if His Honor will indulge yes, me, to... I'll submit this uh, wording. Yes, I, Mr. Yeah. President, we're very open to uh, improving the bill, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh... So we'll move on to the next. We're already on Section 5. Um, and this is on the care center. May I know from His Honor, because we have had multiple discussions on this, um, ito ho bang uh, the creation of sen a center uh, in every public basic education school that shall be equipped with functional physical facilities? Is this progressive realization? Because yes, as Mr. President, yes. you were not... Uh present when we uh, when the minority leader I, I, exactly asked me that yes. question. No, to be honest, Your Honor, <laughs> I overheard it. I'm not sure if I heard it in the lounge or while walking, but I heard the term, so I yeah. said, ah, mukhang covered naman. Yes, and but uh, one of the... Here? Yes, yes, Mr. President, one of the concepts that I learned from uh, Her Honor is the term progressive realization. And okay. in fact, that concept uh, has been applied in many of in the many proposed, your, uh, of proposed measures. Okay. I think that is a much more realistic and a much more, um, uh, I think, a much more realistic track to implement, to fully implement the law, Mr. President. And may I know, Your Honor, um, well, in the in the in the laws that we have passed with this same provision, and of course, its relevance to this bill, can our progressive realization include? ideal setups in certain schools. So that would already be your... Um, <coughs> pilot. pilot. They would be the pilots. Ah. No? So that uh, it's not a progressive realization where all over the country, 5%. Mm -hmm. All over the country, 10%. Yeah. Like we'll have a few key cities where you have very supportive yeah. um, uh, local government officials. And then they have maybe 50 percent, 75, 100 percent realization in two to three that's years. It. Then the others can see, I to palayon. Because let's be honest, um, I, I don't know what country can claim that that they've perfected this, right? So it's yeah. work in progress, and we have to adapt our own style. So can that be done, Your Honor? Yes, Mr. President, uh, I think it's a good idea, as long as uh, they conduct a needs analysis in their yes. uh, area. For example. Um, uh, based on their needs analysis and based on their consultation, uh, so kids are encountering difficulty in their area, then uh, they have to put uh, a care center that will be staffed with mental health specialists. And that, that, that setup can be a model setup for other schools to um, emulate, Mr. President. And perhaps, Your Honor, uh, is, is, it, is, it in the, is it in the bill um, that programs that are low-hanging fruits, in other words, programs that already exist for other reasons, but which directly contribute to this bill on um, mental health in the school-based setting, are assessed so that without having to do anything else, there's an assessment. Like, in other words, I'll, give, I'll be very precise with my example. If there are, if not if, there are schools with robust um, sports programs, if they were to assess the mental health of the student athletes uh, in various programs, yung bang uh, non-competitive, yung for fun lang, PE, for fun, sports, and then very competitive athletes versus none. So parang you have three control groups, none, no sports, recreational sports, and competitive sports, and check the mental health of all. Then you already know na, oh, it looks like, because I can already tell you the answer. I'm pretty sure those engaged in recreational sports will have pretty good mental health. I mean, bearing other circumstances, no? that's why nga, it's, it's a, it has to be controlled studies. And then those engaged in competitive sports, there, there may be some that are doing great and there may be some that are pressured for whatever reason. But there are already studies that show that anyone who runs, uh, um, running, so three control groups, Your Honor, no running, only medication, 
and then running in medication and running only, guess which person has the best uh, mental health outcome? The running only even exceeded the running and medication. So, and, and, and I'm not making that up, that's science, no? because as a runner, I've always felt that going to my time by myself, my time to run really helped, because it, you produce endorphins, endorphins, which makes you feel good. <laughs> um, so, yung ganun ba, yung, we don't have to reinvent it, Your Honor, we already know that it's good for you, it gives you self-esteem, so, Baka they can already they can already make those studies to see how these kids are faring and then hindi na kailangan paggastos na kung ano-ano pang studies your honor diba yeah thank you yeah. thank you mr president i get it from uh, her honor that she wants to include in the bill that um, deped should look at existing programs and yes. existing studies Ex you know so so deped should look at existing programs that are known to contribute to mental health so, yes, like I said, these peer groups that we talked about, there, there are existing and best programs. Practices, uh, yeah. yeah, sports, even though it wasn't, it wasn't created uh, to address mental health program, it was created for physical health, but may effect yon. Yeah. So they can already look at, look at, that's the science, they can already look at the, how the kids are thriving, so that it's also a way of convincing parents and, and uh, education, uh, the principals and all, na, we're not just mandating it, it's proven. These kids fare better, they're happier, they're able to cope. Um, I, I know for a fact, and there are also studies, that people can cope better with their mental health issues when yun nga, they have a peer group or they have a sport that takes them away from their problems, gives them something to, to parang binubuhos nila yung oras nila and attention nila dun sa sports nila yeah. and it takes it away from their problems. I'm Science amenable. na yun, Your Honor. Eh. Yeah, I'm amenable to that, Mr. President. And mm -hmm. uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's good to look at those uh, best practices, if I can uh, call them, uh, so that um, uh, there's already evidence that those type of uh, approaches do actually work and is being uh, implemented in other uh, areas, Mr. President. Yes, I'm amenable to the concept, Mr. President. Mr. President, my staff is pointing out to me that in the declaration of policy, it says there that um, the state shall aim to achieve the following main objectives, institutionalize an effective and efficient school-based mental health program, and strengthen the existing mental health and guidance and counseling programs. But for me, Your Honor, that is very specific to existing mental health and guidance counseling programs. I take that as one line. These are not yet the other programs that effectively contribute to mental health. That's what I'm saying. So um, if His Honor can just give us time to, again, insert that phrase in the right yes, place. Mr. Yes, Mr. President. Conceptually, I agree to, uh, I'm amenable to that uh, uh, proposal, Mr. President. And I think that might be it, Your Honor. Just let me double check Section 7. Yeah, I, I just want, I just have a comment, Your Honor, no, for Section 7, localized multi-tier roadmap. Is this really necessary, Your Honor? I mean, I think children basically have the same, have similar issues. In every school setting, there will be a child who's a victim of violence in their own homes. Meron yan, kahit saan. So, Student, let, num, student, let, student A may not have the same condition as student B, may not have the same condition as student C. But in that whole classroom, mara replicate naman din yun sa iba. Unless, unless, of course, there was a trauma in that area. They are victims of a natural calamity. Mm -hmm. So then they all need interventions, obviously, dahil namatay ng mahal sa buhay, pati yung aso nila namatay, kalabaw nila namatay. You have to intervene on a on a um, community-wide basis. But to ask every school to develop localized multi-year school-based program, parang hindi naman your honor. Kasi I feel like the issues of a child would be the same. So either may abusive relationship, may pressure siya in school to perform. Hindi ho ba? Parang, can I, can I just be educated on why the okay. need for that? Well, Mr. President, the 
this is a, a very important discussion, and we, I remember we um, spent a long time discussing this. Um, the experts are recommending that in coming up with the program and the roadmap, it has to be localized in a sense that uh, different schools will have different needs, and different learners will also encounter uh, different situations, Mr. President. And uh, they discourage a one-size-fits-all slash top-down approach in terms of program. It has to be a bottom-up wherein parents, even learners, are consulted in coming up with a program. And depending on the gravity of the need, like for example, Mr. President, I, I remember one of the discussions internally is, uh, for example, the siege in Marawi, wherein uh, it was widespread uh, and the, uh, the level of atrocities is quite um, high. And, um, of course, the children are exposed to a different type of um, um, trauma. Different type of trauma no, yeah. in, that, in that sense. Yeah. So, so that type of um, uh, scenario should be captured in, a, in the localized Correct. program Correct. and should be captured in the roadmap depending on the gravity of that location, mm -hmm. Mr. President. No, so, and, and, Your Honor, if His Honor um, recalls, just, just as I posed this question, I said, of course, if there's a natural calamity, and I use it, natural calamity, what happened to Marawi is not a natural calamity. It's a man-made, um, extremely uh, painful experience that, that the locals went through. But barring those, no, like community-wide uh, community experiences that affected everyone's mental health, I'm not a health professional. I am a mother, though. And I know that the problems of children, I mean, you can, you can more or less um, determine that there will be somebody with a family problem at home, right? There will be a child who's growing up without a mother, uh, OFW abroad, baka without a father for the same reason, maybe with a basagulero or mang iinom na father, right? So I mean, I'm, what I'm saying, Your Honor, is it's not difficult to identify the kind of pressures of the child. Can does his honor follow so yeah. far? Yeah. That is not difficult. What I don't want to happen is we spend so much time. Alam mo, alam naman natin, Mr. President, that uh, these teachers are already overworked, di ba? So I'm just saying that they don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I note that in the same section seven. Um, yeah. On line four, it says here, provided that yes. all roadmaps shall be crafted, taking into consideration a general right. framework to be provided by DepEd. Yeah. To me, I think that's where you start. Yeah. Unless nga, there was a community-based major occurrence there that has a different effect on yung sa Yolanda. Wow, that changes yeah. how, how these children view the future, right? Mm. Um, okay. Uh, it's, an, it's a war-torn area. It changes how the child... So definitely the intervention there maybe starts with that, you know, major factor. But all I'm saying is, hindi naman nila kailangan alamin yung sitwasyon ng bawat bata to determine that we need to know how to support this child if they have problems at home, right? That's all I'm saying naman, yeah. Your Honor. Yeah, Mr. President, that's why the concept here is there will be a general framework no? because the yes, concepts across the countries, yes. more, like you said, no, more or less uh, the same, but there will be nuances of uh, on the ground. Of course. And that's where the localization of the roadmap, localization of, um, uh, the, of the programs will come in, Mr. President. But the general framework is there, Mr. Yeah. President, so that they will not start from scratch and develop yes. you know, a hodgepodge of programs in different schools. So Mr. just President. with his, his honor's body language, ganun din ako, the general framework yes, is there. So with his permission, I think I might propose language where we say that the general framework is there, and then you immediately identify if there are cultural or, or man-made or natural Inter environmental intervention that have to be taken into consideration to modify these general, these general situations that affect children. Because no matter what I read, they, they are very similar. Tapos may specific trauma nga. Kung, yeah. kunyari, yung nabasa ko lang nung isang araw, ang lungkot, Your Honor, um, uh, refugees from Ethiopia were being shot 
um, by Saudi Arabia forces because they were entering. So if you're a child and you're a survivor of that, wow, that has to be consistent. So I think we're on the same page. Yeah, I, I may I, just provide language because alam nyo na, Your Honor, pag hinimay natin yung budget as malalaman natin, eh kasi ginagawa pa to, yung ganun, parang no, you can start with some general framework naman. Yeah. Yun lang naman po. Yeah, Mr. President, I think we're on the same page that um, there's a general framework that uh, cuts across the entire country, uh, but the, the uh, program and the roadmap uh, should be localized to the extent that uh, it deals with the need of the school and, of course, the nuances of the mental health situation of the learners, Mr. President. I think we, we're, we're in, in unison in that uh, concept, Mr. President. Thank you, Your Honor. And then something very close to my heart, um, Section 8, Your Honor, on the creation of new plantilla positions. If His Honor will recall, um, I, I would say maybe four years ago, we, or maybe even earlier, uh, that's when we, in, in one budget hearing, at least on my end, that's when we discovered that this, um, actually, no, I think, I think it was when I was chairman of the Committee on Education, so that would have been between 2013 to 2016, so almost 10 years ago, um, when we discovered that the position for guidance counselor is uh, a very, it has a very low paying, it's a very low paying position, and then the requirement for for uh, that position is a master's degree. Now, we, we've discussed this already, just put it on record so Correct. those following can understand. So, do, and, and His Honor and I were both very concerned about this, and so when I look at Section 8 now, is it correct, is my understanding correct that um, this, this um, guidance counselor now with a master's degree will now hold salary grade 16? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, so yeah. this is the amendment we're making to address. Yes, Mas uh, master's degree and a license uh, yes, yes. holder, Mr. President. Yes. Yeah, correct, Mr. President. That's and the request of the uh, guidance counselors as, yes. as well as the mental health specialists that uh, participated in the discussion, Mr. President. And itong mental health associate were positions that did not exist before. So yes, Mr. President. So we're creating that. And correct. I'm, and I congratulate His Honor for doing this because once and for all, uh, we, we, we took note of a problem. Uh, it's not something we could have changed easily, but we now, with, with the time that His Honor has taken really dissecting this, we now created five. Is this five? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, Tama? Yes. Five. Correct, Mr. Five President. different layers. So we now created that career path, Your Honor. Correct. Congratulations. So they can move on. Kasi sa totoo lang, marami dito, mapapirate din. <laughs> mapapirate din sa ibang bansa, mapapirate din ng private companies. But at least for those who are dedicated, uh, who, who want to serve their country, who want to work with children, they have this option now, may career path sila. Yeah. Tama? And that, that, correct. And that's where the, the um, return service will also come into yes. play. You know, because uh, definitely this type of professionals are in demand, eh? not only yes. uh, abroad, but also I, I found out that a lot of our, let's say, social workers, they work in um, NGOs, in multilateral organizations. So not only in specific governments, but to NGOs. No? So, yes, Mr. President, um, this is to address the shortage in terms of mental health practitioners in our school system. And hopefully, with this increase in salary, we can attract more to come in and take these courses, Mr. President. Yes, my staff has a very good question, Your Honor. Um, if you recall, uh, guidance counselors do handle yung, um, well, guidance nga, no? So career paths, di ba? Uh, what, course, what course they'll study. Because especially now with the different tracks, no? I think it becomes more relevant because they're somehow earlier, earlier than later, they, they have to make decisions on the tracks or at least their interests and talents have to be identified. Uh, when we say that all existing, so I'm now on page seven, line one. Uh, this is still part of Section 8. When we say all existing plantilla positions of guidance counselors and psychologists in the DepEd shall be converted to mental health specialist plantilla positions, um, paano na yung counseling on career paths? 
is that still the job of a mental health specialist? Or well, can we expand their title to be sure that we didn't leave that behind? Well, Mr. President, the guidance counselor performed counseling and career guidance, Mr. President. So, But they they're will, now called mental health specialists. So it seems called, different, Your Honor. They will be called mental health specialists, Mr. President. But they perform those roles in their school, Mr. President. But for me, Your Honor, just, just listening to the term mental health, I feel, I don't think that covers guidance, career counseling. So I would like His Honor to take a look at it and help us just take a look at it again and see if we could call them mental health specialists and end because medyo iba yun eh. yeah. let me let me review this mr president i am asking my staff to pull the uh, the uh, the counseling uh because your honor if you look at the i know the law on guidance counseling, there is a definition of what guidance and counseling as a profession is. And I don't yeah. think it is exactly, it is very similar, but probably not exactly aligned. Mm -hmm. no, I know. Thank you. Yeah, but it's the same, but the profession is guidance counseling. So who would perform this function? School head? Who would perform it? School head, huh? Uh, well, Mr. President, um, in RA one one two o six. This is an act establishing a career guidance and counseling program for all secondary schools and appropriating funds. Therefore, uh, in section five, um, there shall be established established a CGCP center in all secondary school to be headed by the school administrator, who shall be assisted by a trained career and employment guidance counselor, Mr. President. So the head will still be the school administrator, but the um, person who will assist will be the guidance counselor, Mr. President. Yes, but based on this bill, you eradicated the position of guidance counselor. It's now a mental health specialist. So there's a little bit of, uh, for me, there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, does that guidance counselor still exist? Because you now you're now defining a mental health associate and a mental health specialist. And for some of those specialists and associates, they're not necessarily guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you're, and, and the section seven, eight now says all existing plantilla positions shall be converted. It's not, is, is it, if it's just a plantilla position, I don't have a problem with that, you know, like, all existing guidance counselors shall now receive plantilla position mm. uh, 16, 17, mm. etc. But if you're now going to call them mental health specialists, I think there's a change in what their scope of work is. We, we can, anyway, I have a few yeah, amendments yeah. to be submitted. Would His Honor like to table this and it yeah, yeah, uh, can get, be part of the discussion among our staff to yeah. clarify it? So I get the, uh, of the point of uh, uh, the gentle lady from Taguig. I, I, I see your point here. Let me, um, let me review this law again and see how it will 
how it's harmonized. Yeah, yes. how, it, how it will harmonize with the proposed bill, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I think, Your Honor, that's basically it. Um, we will submit probably two or three amendments only just to clarify the points we raised. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I do value the uh, suggestions of uh, uh, His Honor. Uh, every time she uh, gives suggestions, it sharpens the bill and clarifies a lot of the, uh, a lot of the um, provisions that might lead to confusion in the future. So thank you very much, Senator Pia. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia. Session suspended. Report number 66. So moved, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill number 2019 under Committee Report number 57. This is the Bill on Caregivers Welfare Act. So moved, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. Consideration of Senate Bill number 2019 under Committee Report number 57 is now in order. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the uh, parliamentary status of the measure uh, is that we are in the period of interpolation. There being no other member who wishes to interpolate, I move that we close the period of interpolations and debate. So move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none. The motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill number 2019 under Committee Report number 57. So move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. With the permission of the body, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill number 1846. 
This is the Bill on Internet Transactions Act of 2022. Is there objection? Hearing none. Consideration of Senate Bill Number 1846 under Committee Report Number 32 is now in order. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the parliamentary status of the measure is that we are we have closed the period of uh, interpolations and debate, and uh, with that, I move to open the period of individual amendments. So move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none. Period of individual amendments hereby open. Mr. President, this juncture, I move that we recognize the sponsor of the measure, Senator Mark Villar, our Deputy Majority Leader, for individual amendments. The sponsor of the measure, Senator Mark Villar, is hereby recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, um, these are my line by line. Um, these are the line by line amendments. On page two, line three, delete the phrase "towards these ends" and replace it with "towards this end." I so move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none. Amendment is approved. On the same page and line, delete the word "ensure" and replace it with "guarantee." I so move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none. Amendment is approved. On page 2, delete the entire text of Section 3, specifically from line 9 until page 6, line 4, and replace it with the following. Scope and coverage. This act shall apply to all business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer internet transactions where one of the parties is situated in the Philippines or where the digital platform, e-retailer, or online merchant is availing of the Philippine market. The following shall be excluded from the coverage of this act. A consumer to consumer transactions B financial products and services as defined under Republic Act number 11765 or the Financial Products and Services Consumer Protection Act C digital payments and payment systems as defined under Republic Act number 11127 or the National Payment Systems Act D Entities and transactions as regulated under Republic Act Number no. 7653 or the new Central Bank Act as amended. And E, the regulation of the content of online media except digital advertising of goods and services. I so move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. The definition of terms will be transported to Section 4 for purposes of orderly proceeding. We propose to defer the introduction of proposed amendments to the said section. We shall address any inconsistency in the later provisions. In view of the above, I thus move to delete the entire, sec the entire text of Section 4 on page 6. I so move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. We will now proceed to the amendments on Section 5. On page 6, delete Section 5 in its entirety, starting from line 29 all the way to page 7, line 24. And the succeeding section shall be renumbered accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. Is there objection? There being none, amendments approved. On page 7, line 25, renumber section 6 as section 5. I so move, Mr. President. Is there objection? Hearing none, amendments approved. On the same page and line, insert the words, quote, purposeful availment and before the word, quote, extraterritorial. Extra I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, line 27, delete the comma after the word regulations and the words, quote, including the Foreign Investment Act and this act and replace them with the phrase and cannot evade legal liability in the Philippines by virtue of non-residency or non-registration. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, line 28, delete the word purposely and replace it with the word purposefully. And every, the, and every mention thereafter, purposely, shall be replaced by the word purposefully. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. Still on page 7, line 31, delete the number 11 and replace it with the number 10. On page, on page 8, lines 1 to 2, and every mention thereafter, 
delete the words Secretary of Trade and Industry and replace them with DTI Secretary. Thus, the new Section 5, as renumbered, will now read as follows. Section 5, Purposeful Availment and Extraterritorial Application. A person engaging in e-commerce who purposely, purposefully avails of the Philippine market shall be subject to applicable Philippine laws and regulations and cannot evade legal liability in the Philippines by virtue of non-residency or non-registration. One who purposefully avails of the Philippine market without establishing any real or legal presence in the Philippines shall be required to notify the e-commerce bureau created under Section 7 of this Act for inclusion in the online business registry, established under Section 10 of this Act, or may designate a resident agent who shall be authorized to receive on their behalf notices or processes in any legal proceeding in the Philippines, subject to guidelines to be issued by the DTI Secretary, the accessibility of goods and services to online consumers in the Philippines shall be considered in ascertaining whether one engaged in e-commerce is purposefully <coughs> availing the Philippine market. On page 8, line 5, renumber section 7 as section 6. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. <coughs> On the same page, line 7, delete the word may and replace it with shall. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, still on line 7, delete the word benefit and replace it with the words beneficial treatment. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, line 12, delete the words creation of the. I so move, Mr. President. Is there any objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. Still on page 8, delete the entire section 8 on functions of the e-commerce bureau specifically from line 14 all the way to page 9, line 32, and replace it with the following. Section 7, Creation and Composition of the E-Commerce Bureau. Within six months after the effectivity of this Act, the E-Commerce Bureau, here and after referred to as the Bureau, shall be created under the DTI. The Bureau shall be headed by a director who must possess competencies in e-commerce and online transactions and all the laws and processes related thereto. There shall be three assistant directors for policy and administration, for enforcement, and for operations. The DTI secretary shall determine the organizational structure and staffing pattern of the Bureau, subject to the approval of the Department of Budget and Management. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendments approved. On page 10, Delete the entire Section 9 on the composition of the Bureau, specifically lines 1 to 12, and replace it with the following paragraphs. Section 8, Functions of the E-Commerce Bureau. The Bureau shall have the following powers and functions. A, formulate policies, plans, and programs to ensure the robust and dynamic development of e-commerce. B, implement, monitor, and ensure strict compliance with the provisions of this Act. C, require digital platforms, online merchants, or any person who engages in internet transactions to register their business with the Bureau and provide the information necessary for policy making and program development purposes. D, identify regulatory gaps affecting the e-commerce and recommend appropriate executive or legislative measures that foster the growth of the sector. E, receive and refer business and consumer complaints on internet transactions to the appropriate government agency which has jurisdiction over the concern and intervene as necessary to facilitate the speedy resolution thereof. F, coordinate with, petition, or compel through the DTI secretary whenever appropriate any entity, government agency, or instrumentality to take action on any matter that may impede e-commerce. G, investigate modo proprio and file the appropriate cases for violations of any provision of this act. H, intervene or participate in a manner as may be appropriate in cases initiated or pending with other regulatory agencies involving e-commerce or violations of any provision of this Act. I, monitor the compliance of other government agencies or instrumentalities with the provisions of this Act and the e-commerce roadmap. J, conduct information, education, and advocacy campaign to ensure a proactive policy regime. K, collaborate with, the, with BSP and other government agencies to develop frameworks to incentivize the use of digital payments and promote their education and adoption among businesses and consumers, notwithstanding Section 3B and C of this Act. 
coordinating with the financial regulators in protecting online consumers, and facilitating the speedy resolution of complaints of online consumers that involve the use of digital financial services as provided, as provided by applicable laws. L, engage with law enforcement and other relevant government agencies in a formalized interregulator cooperation mechanism to address all cross-cutting issues and concerns that affect online consumers and the general public. On page 10, delete the entire section 10 on referral of complaints, specifically lines 30, 13 to 22, and replace it with the following. Section 9, referral and tracking of complaints. The Bureau shall refer any complaint it receives involving violations of other laws committed in the course of e-commerce activities to the appropriate regulatory authority for action. In appropriate cases, the DTI may initiate a formal complaint with the appropriate regulatory authorities. The Bureau shall track any such complaint or referral and coordinate with the speedy resolution thereof. I so move, Mr. President. Is there any objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On page 10, line 23, renumber section 11 as section 10. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page and line, delete the phrase, a period of, after the word within. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, line 27, delete the comma after the word validity and insert the word and after the word validity. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page and line, insert the words the data between the words of and and. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, delete the entire second paragraph, specifically from page 10, line 29, all the way to page 11, line 2. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On page 11, line 3, renumber section 12 as section 11. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, line 6, insert a comma after the word may. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, amendment is approved. On the same page and line, insert the word thereafter and place a comma before the word be. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, amendment is approved. On page 11, delete sections 13 and 14 in their entirety, specifically from line 11 to, 20, to line 23. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On the same page, line 28, renumber section 15 as section 12. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, amendment is approved. On the same page, line 30, delete beginning, delete beginning with the word that until the word market on line 31 and replace them with the phrase involved in internet transactions. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, amendment is approved. On page 12, line 7, after the period, insert the sentence, unless expressly specified, nothing in this act shall be construed as to diminish or deprive the regulatory jurisdiction confirmed by law upon other government agencies concerning the services that they regulate, notwithstanding that such services may involve e-commerce. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. Still on page 12, insert a new section 13 between lines 7 and 8, which shall read as follows. Secretary th uh, section 13, subpoena. In the exercise of the powers under this act, the DTI secretary shall have the power to issue summons, subpoena, ad testificandum, and subpoena duces tecum to alleged violators or witnesses to compel their attendance and the production of documents in investigations or proceedings before the Bureau. Failure to comply with the subpoena and testificandum and subpoena duces tecum shall authorize the filing of a case of contempt under the rules of court. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, amendment is approved. On page 12, delete the entire section 16, specifically from line 8 to line 14, and replace it with the following. Section 14, authority to, ins to issue compliance order. The DTI Secretary shall have the power to issue a compliance order against any person found to be in violation of this Act, Republic Act Number 7394, or the Consumer Act of the Philippines, or any other applicable trade and consumer protection laws and regulations 
I so move, Mr. President. Is there objection? There being none, amendment is approved. Mr. President, may I move for a minute suspension? Session suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill Number 1846. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? for ordinary business to the calendar for special orders committee report number 98 on senate bill number 2367 this bill pertains to batang magaling act so move mr president is there objection there being none motion is approved thank you mr president mr president i move that we consider senate bill number 2367 under committee report number 98 is there objection there being none the motion is approved consideration of senate bill number 2367 is now in order with the permission of the body, the secretary will read only the title of the bill without prejudice. With the permission of the body, the secretary will read only the title of the bill without prejudice to insert in the record the whole text thereof. An act ensuring that senior high school graduates under the K-12 program are equipped with the knowledge, training, and skills demanded in the labor market, enhancing their employability and competitiveness, creating the Batang Magaling Councils to strengthen multi-stakeholder collaboration and support for their employment, allowing reduction of training expenses incurred for their skills development, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, to sponsor the measure, may we recognize the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Basic Education and Ways and Means, Senator Win Gachelian, to deliver the sponsorship speech. The sponsor of the measure, Senator Win Gachelian, is now recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I wish you all a pleasant day. Today, I stand before you to discuss a proposed measure that holds 
not only of personal significance to me, but also of immense importance for the future of our beloved nations, the Batang Magaling Act. This, propose, this proposal has been nurtured in my heart, evolving over the years as I closely observe the struggles faced by Filipino youth after their graduation from senior high school. From senior high school. It also brings to light the unpreparedness of our labor market to accommodate them, resulting in their promised potential remaining untapped in the workplace. But before delving into the details of this groundbreaking legislation, allow me to share a quote from one of the world's greatest minds, Albert, Albert Einstein, who once said, Everyone, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. This quote resonates deeply with me because it ep epitomizes the core philosophy of Batang Magaling Act. Dinong Pangulo, ang ating bansa, ay pinagpala ng mga individual na punong-puno ng potensyal. Ang ating mga kabataan ay mismong representasyon ng potensyal na ito. Sila ay mga batang magaling sa sarili nilang paraan, naghihintay lamang na matuklasan at malinang. However, much of Einstein's fish, they may be judged by an outdated and one-size-fits-all educational system that fails to recognize and cater to their diverse talents. As we reflect on the profound impact of the K-12 law and the introduction of the senior high school program, we must not forget the solemn promise we made to our youth, the employment promise that should guide their journey beyond the halls of education. When we envisioned the senior high school curriculum, we saw hope, a hope that our senior high school graduates would have an array of paths to choose from, including higher education, middle-level skills development, employment, and entrepreneurship. However, reality paints a different picture, one where promise of employment remains an unfulfilled, unfulfilled dream for far too many. Data from the Department of Education has revealed a stark truth. Approximately 74% of senior high school graduates pursue higher education, while only 6% venture into middle-level skills development, leaving a mere 20% to explore the paths of employment and entrepreneurship. Sa madaling salita, tatlo sa bawat apat na senior high school graduates ang pinipili pa rin tahakin ang antas ng kolehiyo. Ito ay isang indikasyon na ang pangako natin na mabigyan sila ng magandang oportunidad sa pagtatapos nila ng senior high school ay hindi na isa katuparan. Ito ay isang pangako na tila na pako. A 2020 publication from the Philippine Institute of for Development Studies has also brought to light the harsh truth. We have failed to provide senior high school graduates with a clear labor market advantage. Their average daily pay is, not, is only slightly higher than those who completed grade 10. Lamang lang ng labing apat na piso ang kanilang sinasahod kumpara sa mga nakapagtapos ng junior high school. Even more alarming is the 2021 labor force data which reveals that over 200,000 senior high school graduates were unemployed, a figure that represents dreams deferred, potential untapped, and hope unfulfilled. Ginong Pangulo, ito ay isang realidad na nag-iwan sa atin ng isang mabigat na responsibilidad bilang mga mambabatas, ang tuldukan, ang agwat sa pagitan ng edukasyon at kakayahang makapagtrabaho. At this point, allow me to pose a critical question. Why are our Batang Magaling struggling in the labor market. The PIDS has identified two key, two key insights. First, senior high school graduates lack the specialized skills required by industries. Second, they lack a quality work immersion program and sufficient duration to acquire essential competencies and skills in the real workplace setting. Mr. President, we have the power to change this narrative. It is our duty to equip them with the tools needed to succeed in the workforce, to empower them with the confidence to embrace diverse opportunities, and to fulfill the employment promise we made when we forged a path 
of the K-12 basic education reform. Thus, today I rise to sponsor Senate Bill Number 2367 under Committee Report Number 98, known as the Batang Magaling Act. First and foremost, the main objective of this act is to ensure that our senior high school graduates are well prepared for their chosen path, be it higher education, middle-level skills development, employment, and entrepreneurship. By aligning a K-12 basic education curriculum with the needs of the labor market, we establish a vital link connecting education to both private and public sectors. To achieve this, we propose the creation of the national and local Batamagaling councils comprising of government agencies, industry partners, labor groups, and local authorities working in synergy to guide and enhance the senior high school programs, curriculum, and work immersion component. Through this proposed measure, we also aim to develop national and local Batang Magaling roadmaps in the provinces, cities, and municipalities that shall introduce interventions and set measurable goals for enhancing the employability and competitiveness of senior high school graduates. Every Batang Magaling roadmap is not merely a plan. It is a dynamic strategy designed to introduce targeted interventions and establish concrete objectives that will elevate the potential of our Batang Magaling to new heights. Furthermore, the work immersion program lie at the heart of, the, of this bill, as education institutions will be mandated to develop in learners the essential competencies, skills, work ethic, and values needed to excel in further education or in the workforce. To ensure their alignment with the market demand, labor market demand studies shall be conducted every three years by the councils using reliable local labor market data. This data will not only guide the development of the work immersion programs, but also the Batang Magaling roadmaps. Recognizing the crucial role of information and data in the employment of senior high school graduates, this bill proposes the establishment of a centralized Batang Magaling database in collaboration with the Department of Labor and Employment. This database will serve as a one-stop shop facilitating stronger linkages among education institutions, industry partners, and government agencies, ensuring the meeting of skills demand within the country. Moreover, this proposed measure will pave the way to promote the affirmative hiring of senior high school graduates, encouraging industry partners and government agencies to review their hiring policies and job requirements to provide employment opportunities for our young talents such as entry-level positions. The DOLE, in coordination with DepEd, shall conduct studies and research to craft strategies and guidelines to minimize the impediments to senior high school employment. The Civil Service Commission will also be involved in this process, revising its policies to integrate the qualifications of senior high school graduates into the qualification standards for government employment. To guarantee the senior the guarantee the high standards of senior high school program, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority will assume a critical role in ensuring the provision of national competency assessment and granting the national certificates to graduates who pass such assessment. To provide some context, Mr. President, as we analyze the statistics presented during the public hearing, it came to our attention that in school year 2019 to 2020, a significant 73.7% .7 of our technical vocational livelihood or TVL learners were unable to undertake competency assessments, largely due to financial limitations. Ang pigurang ito ang sumasalamin sa mga pangarap ng mga TVL learners na nabigyan sana ng pagkakataong makakuha ng national assessment kung mayroon lamang silang pambayad. This leaves a mere 25.7% of our 400,000 senior high school TVL graduates who secured national certif certification. Nonetheless, despite the relatively low certification rate, the passing rate among those who participated in the examination remains remarkably high at 98%. This highlights the exceptional competence of individuals who took the assessments. To address the issue of financial costs our TVL learners are facing. This measure seeks to provide free of charge national competency assessment 
to DepEd Senior High School Program learners upon their graduation. Sa madaling salita, libre na silang makakuha, libre na silang makakakuha ng national competency assessments. TESTA, budgets, TESTA budget estimates require 1.52 billion pesos to implement this proposal. This amount accounts for only 0.2% of the total DepEd budget for 2023. With this budget, we can already provide our senior high school graduates the national certification required by public and private employers. Sa halagang ito, ginong Pangulo, maraming ng, marami ng oportunidad ang maaring makamit ng ating mga senior high school graduates. Moreover, to enable our senior high school learners to pursue their calling, this bill proposes to utilize the current joint delivery voucher program for senior high school technical vocational livelihood specializations. This program will enable learners enrolled in public schools to avail of vouchers and pursue their desired TVL specializations in eligible partner institutions from private schools, non deped public schools, or TESDA accredited private technical vocational institutes in case such specializations are not being offered in the respective public schools. Finally, in recognition of the industry partners' contribution to the skills development of senior high school learners participating in work immersion program, this bill allows the additional 50% deduction of training expenses from their taxable income. Sa pamamagitan nito, mas maraming industry ang mahikayat na maghasa sa kapasidad ng ating senior high school learners. In a nutshell, this bill embodies a comprehensive and forward-thinking approach to empowering graduates of the senior high school program. By aligning our educational offerings with the demands of the labor market, fostering collaboration among educational institutions, industry partners, and government agencies, and creating pathways for the development of essential skills, we take a decisive step towards securing a prosperous future for our nation. Before I close, Mr. President, I wish to express my deep, deepest gratitude to my esteemed colleagues who have worked tireless, tirelessly to co-author this bill. Senate President Pro Tempore Loren Lagarda, Majority Leader Joel Villanueva, Senator Sani Angara, Senator Chis Escudero, Senator Bong Revilla Jr., and Senator Cynthia Villar. I'll, I also extend my heartfelt appreciation to the various education stakeholders whose active involvement in the legislative process have been instrumental in bringing this bill to fruition. Without your unwavering support and invaluable contributions, this dream would not have become a reality. Mr. President, as we gather here today, let us never forget the essence of why we embark on this journey, to empower our youth, to break the cycle of poverty, and to make meaningful contributions to society. We cannot afford to let our young talents languish in unemployment, leaving their dreams shattered. Let us breathe life into the employment promise and create a brighter tomorrow for our beloved country. Ang Batang Magaling Act ay hindi lamang isang panukalang batas. Ito ay isang pangako sa ating mga kabataan at isang pag-asa tungo sa maunlad na kinabukasan. Our actions today will echo through the generations, reminding them that we believe in, their potential, in the potential of our youth, our Batang Magaling, by investing in their future we are investing in the future of our nation. Thank you very much, Mr. President and esteemed colleagues. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Senator Gachilan, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, may uh, I be allowed to just give a very short co-sponsorship speech? Yes, the Majority Leader is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, dear colleagues, magandang hapon po. Isang karangalan para sa atin ang maging co-sponsor ng Senate Bill Number no. 2367 o ang Batang Magaling Act. Pinabati natin at pinapasalamatan ang ating uh, chairperson of the Senate Committee on Basic Education. Walang iba kundi si Senator uh, Sherwin Gatchalian. Buo po ang ating suporta sa panukalang batas, sa mga panukalang batas na naglalayong mapabuti at lalo pa pong mapalawak ang mga oportunidad para sa ating mga kabataan na magiging bahagi ng ating lakas paggawa. Ngayong araw po na ito ay naglabas ng bagong Labor Force Survey, ang Philippine Statistics Authority o PSA, para sa buwan ng Hunyo 2023. Ang ating unemployment rate ay 4.5% o 2.33 million na walang trabaho 
o at least yung naghahanap ng trabaho na hindi makakuha ng trabaho. Samantalang meron din po tayo na 12% o 5.87 million na manggagawang may trabaho pero nagnanais na magtrabaho ng mas mahabang oras o yung underemployment. Ngunit kung ikukumpara po natin, ginoong Pangulo, sa ating youth workforce, sadyang mas mataas ang numero ng mga kabataan na naghahanap ng trabaho. Para sa buwan lamang ng Hunyo 2023, sa halos 7.16 milyong membro ng youth workforce, 9.9% po o katumbas ng 711,000 ang walang trabaho. Noong tayo po ay nagkaroon ng pag-aaral at uh, ng mga kaugnay na paksa para po sa ating uh, panukalang batas na trabaho para sa Bayan Act na pinasa na po ng Senado sa ikatlong pagbasa o ang National Employment and Recovery Master Plan. Nakita po natin na halos hindi nag-iiba ang ating youth unemployment rate sa loob po ng isang taon. Sa pag-aaral po ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies o PIDS noong 2018, nag-interview po sila ng mga human resource managers at officers sa 26 na mga kumpanya kung willing silang tumanggap ng empleyado na senior high school graduate. Sa 26 na kumpanya, 22 ang nagsabi na meron silang preconditions o alinlangan sa pag-hire. Sa taong pong 2020, ginoong Pangulo na pag-aaral din ng PIDS, napag-alaman po na mahigit 20% ng senior high school graduates lamang ang nakikilahok sa labor market. Sinabi rin po ng PIDS na senior high school graduates have poorer outcomes in terms of labor force, force participation, employment, and underemployment rates. With an average of 600,000 new entrants to the youth labor force every single year, Mr. President, and at least 1.5 million new entrants this year because of the K-12, we need to make sure that our youth laborers, particularly senior high school graduates, are equipped with the necessary skills and knowledge to meet the demands of the labor market. Kailangan po natin silang tulungan sa kanilang school-to-work transition at mabawasan ang kanilang barriers of entry, yung mga hadlang sa kanilang pagpasok upang makahanap ng trabaho na para sa kanila. Nais po nating muli magpasalamat sa ating sponsor, ang chairperson ng uh, uh, EDCOM o Education Commission 2, Senator Win Gatchelian. At sa tamang oras ay makikilahok po tayo sa mga diskusyon patungkol sa pagpapabuti ng panukalang ito. Gaya po ng nabanggit kanina sa atin, ng ating minority leader, ito'y subset din na makakatulong doon po sa ating Tulong Trabaho Act na ating ipinasana dito sa Senado. At ang balita ko nga po, Ginoong Pangulo, this coming week o next week, ay maipapasana sa third and final reading ng House of Representatives ang Trabaho para sa Bayan Act. Muli po, Ginoong Pangulo, maraming salamat at pagpalain tayo lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Mr. President, at this juncture, I also would like to move that we insert into the records the co-sponsorship speech, speeches of Senators Revilla, Legarda, and De La Rosa. So move, Mr. President. Mr. Objection, there being none, the co-sponsorship speeches are hereby inserted into the records. Mr. President, at this juncture and to allow our distinguished colleagues to study further this measure, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill Number 2367 under Committee Report Number 98. So move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, consideration of Senate Bill Number 2367 under Committee Report Number 98 is hereby suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for a minute suspension. Session suspended.
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 2224 under Committee Report Number 70. This is the bill on ease of paying taxes. There being no objection, motion is approved. Mr. President, the parliamentary status of the measure is that we are still in the period of interpolations and debate. Uh, no no uh, other member wishes to interpolate. And so at this juncture, I will move to close the uh, period of interpolations and debate. There being objection, the motion is approved. Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill Number 2224 under Committee Report Number 70. There have been no objection. So motion is approved. Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Wednesday, August 23, 2023. Is there any objection? There being none, the session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Wednesday, August 23, 2023. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. President.